Hello, and welcome to the bonus reflection video. And I'm glad to see you here. Though, of course, I can't actually see you, but I think you know what I mean. Uh, but basically, I'm glad you're here. It means you want to improve your grade, and that means learning history better, which is something I'm very happy to he hear, see, whatever. Uh, it gets confusing when you're recording something that people will watch later. So first of all, I need to say a little bit about how I use bonus. Uh, sometimes people treat bonus as a way to get easy points, right? They, it's like, okay, I didn't do well. Uh, those were hard points. I didn't get those. I want easy points. And that's not how I use bonus. I use bonus to encourage people to reflect and develop habits that will help them to do better. Right? That's why I usually base bonus, the amount of bonus points a, a student receives is based on improvement. This will only work then if you put in time and energy and apply what you learn. Now, I think learning in and of itself is intrinsically good. It's good to know more, know more about the world, especially the world in the past, which is a historian is why I talk about. But even if that's not something you're particularly interested in, it's good to kind of have a reminder about the importance of just earning good grades. Uh, having a GPA of a 3.0 is kind of like the magic number because that is the requirement for like a life scholarship and other scholarships. And a 3.0 is like a B. What does that mean? Well, to have a B, a 3.0 GPA, a B, you need to be earning Bs at least, preferably As, but you need to be learning at least Bs. If you earn a C, you need to balance it out with an A. Ds and Fs, you don't even want to think about. Those will just destroy your GPA. So it's very important that you get at least a B in this class because the classes you'll take later will be even harder. It would be better to get an A. B is kind of minimum. And that's what you should be shooting for, either a B or an A, because that goes directly to your pocketbook, right? Good grades equals money in the form of financial aid. So, and since we're on the subject of money, one thing I want to point out that sometimes students kind of struggle with is this issue of time in college, because it's very different from time in a brick and mortar um, high school, for example, where you would go, you know, you got to be there, you know, 7.30 a.m. or whenever it's required, and then you leave at like 3 p.m. It's very clear when you're in school. But that's not how college works, right? You're only in class for so many hours a week. It's not nearly what you'd be in for class in a high school. So here's the thing to kind of think about. What makes a full-time job? Well, 40 hours a week makes a full-time job. So if you're a full-time student, that means you should be spending about 40 hours a week with schoolwork. And this is why financial aid wants you to be a full-time student, right? If you drop down below, say, 12 hours, right, then you're no longer a full-time student and there's a lot of aid you don't qualify for. Now, one thing I want to point out, I'm not an expert on financial aid. If you have specific financial aid questions, talk to your the financial aid office. But in general, that's how things work. You need at least 12 hours to qualify as a full-time student in order to get financial aid. And being full-time means you're working at least 40 hours. So usually that means you're taking about 15 hours of courses. It's typically about five courses, but you can actually go down to 12 and be full-time still. Like I say, though, there's specific things for each scholarship. I'm just talking in general. So here's the thing then. Where does the other 28 to 15 hours come from? If you're only in class at 12 to 15 hours, where do we get the rest of the hours to make for a total of 40 hours? And that is, of course, the work outside of class. You should be spending about one and three quarters, uh, one hour and 45 minutes or so of work uh, or time studying, doing homework outside of class for every hour you spend in class. So a three-hour class, such as History 121, History 122, would require more than five hours outside of class. Now, this specific class is a hybrid, right? So we only meet one hour a week. So you would take the other two hours have to be made up for, so you would be spending about seven hours, uh, seven hours outside of class. Now that's including watching the videos, right? There's about two hours of videos a week that makes up for the time that we're not meeting, right? So we had the one hour of discussion review, then the two hours of videos, and then the rest of the time you would be spending studying. So here's the thing. If your grade is not where you want it to be, and you're not putting in approximately this amount of time, you probably need to invest more, right? So if you're kind of like, yeah, I'm doing all right. You know, I watch the videos and, um, you know, I do the study guides, but my grade's still not where it's at. It's like, well, how much extra time are you spend spending studying or reviewing? 
you know, if you're not spending several hours at least reviewing and studying for the class, you know, you're not going to learn the material, you're not going to do well. So that's something to think about. This is your full-time job, being a student. This is your full-time job, right? So you need to be investing time outside of the classroom in it. Now, here's the thing. We want to do everything. There's so many cool things to do in life. There's so many fun things to do. There's so many interesting things to do, but our time is limited. You can't do everything. So we have to make a conscious decision about what we will focus on. So if you say, I want to focus on getting my grades up, you need to do that. You need to make a conscious choice to take the time to study, to do all the assignments and all that in order to do better right? Sounds very simple, but you have to make a conscious decision. You have to think about that when you get up in the morning. Okay, what am I going to do today to achieve my goals? When you go to bed at night, think, okay, what could I have done, done better? And also, what did I do right? But it's also important to avoid making unconscious decisions that could prevent you from improving, right? It's important to avoid unconscious decisions that prevent you from improving. So what I mean by that, no one's ever going to say, well, I want to do worse, right? We all know the right things to say. Are you going to study hard? Yes, I'm going to study hard. Are you going to pay attention? Yes, I'm going to pay attention. We all know the right things to say. But then, you know, it's time to study and one of your friends comes in the dorm room and says, hey, let's go to Starbucks and get a cup of coffee. And you're like, oh, okay, that sounds good. I'll study better with some caffeine. And then you go and then you, you know that it's when you leave from Starbucks, you're going to be expected to study. So you kind of linger there. Maybe you see, you know, your other friend says, hey, I'm going to leave. But then you see another friend, you sit down with them. You're making unconscious decisions there that prevent you from improving. You're not sitting unconsciously and saying, I'm choosing not to improve. But you're unconsciously saying, I'm not going to improve, right? Because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're making a decision, I'm going to stay here and hang around rather than do my work. And uh, it can be just watching another video on YouTube. It could be playing another video game. It could be when there's a break saying, hey, you know, I've been working hard. I'm going to take the weekend off. Or I'm going to take a three-day weekend. I'm not going to do any work. And um, those are unconscious decisions that prevent you from improving. You're not choosing consciously to fail. You're not choosing consciously to, to continue having problems, but you are unconsciously choosing that by deciding that you're not going to do that work. So it's important if you want to improve, that means you have to change. So I'll have students like get almost the exact same test score each time. And they're like, how do I improve? It's like, well, you need to think about what you're doing and you need to change it. If you prepare for the test the exact same way and get the exact same grade, well, it's not surprising, right? If you're doing the same things, you're going to get the, if you put in the same inputs, you're going to get the same outputs. If you do the same thing preparing for the test, the results are probably going to be the same. So you really have to reflect on what you've done and figure out how could I do this better? How could I do it more efficiently? And then adapt to do better. So how do you do well in this class, right? Here's kind of the practical advice now that I've talked about the theoretical things. First of all, you need to make sure you have the best possible environment you can for watching the videos completing the assignments, and studying. That can be tricky, especially if you live at home or if you have noisy roommates, but you have to kind of think about that. I have to schedule my work time around some family duties, and I, I know when I'm going to be left alone, and I make sure that I do the work that I need the most concentration at that time. But it's important to be think about your environment and do the best you can to have a good environment. It's important that you review your study guides frequently. People often fill out the study guides, and then when it's time to meet in class, they've already forgotten what they wrote down. And so it's not enough just to get those things done. You need to review them so you learn them, because there's just too much information on the test to try and look down, look up things when you haven't learned them, right? The idea of making things open note is so that people can confirm knowledge. So you're just like, I think it's Confucius that said that, and then you look up your notes like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's Confucius. I can go ahead. Um, and I think that just simulates more what life is kind of really like, you know, it's very seldom that you would ever just have to memorize everything. Usually you can refer to something, but if you haven't learned the information at all, no, you, you're not going to do well on the test, right? Because you're not even going to know where to look, right? If you um, don't know that Lu Bong is Chinese, you're not going to know to look at that study guide where we cover China. So it's important that you review your study guides frequently. It's good to have them ready so you can look at them when you get ready to take the exam. Make sure you have reminders for the quizzes and exams. I had a, quite a few people email me saying, well, when's the exam? Well, I mentioned it in class um, when it was going to be. I also gave out a study or a, a schedule that says when the quiz and exam is going to be. So why are you emailing me to ask me this question? And I'm not trying to be rude. My point is, why are you doing this? You should know when it is. 
And if you don't know when it is, that shows that you're not really connected to the class, right? You need to know those things. And people have cell phones and cell phones are great because they have calendars and they have alarms. So one thing that's a good idea to do is to sit down with the schedule and set an alarm, set a reminder when every quiz is due, when all the exams are due and put in the times. I do that to help me remember things. Uh, I also stick my schedules on a wall to help me remember when things are due. But it's very important that you remember those things. One day, if you're not already, you're probably going to be a parent. You're going to have a job. Uh, you're going to have a lot of family obligations. And you're going to have to figure out how to remember all these things because you sure as heck don't want to forget your kid. It, pick up your kid, right? That would be terrible. But it's important as you're to learn to remember those things, right? That's your job. Saying I forgot is a really bad excuse because it's your job to remember. And there's lots of wonderful tools that will help you to remember. Like I say, cell phones are great. Go to free tutoring if you have trouble with filling out the study guide. And one thing I really have to emphasize, don't just look at the PowerPoints. Make sure you watch the videos, right? Sometimes people can kind of finesse things and kind of, you know, make answers, you know, that look okay just looking at the PowerPoints, but it's not going to help you when it's time to take the exam. That's just cutting a corner. Here's a big thing. It's very important to prioritize attending in person. If you are healthy, have not been exposed to COVID or 19 or are not in quarantine, you really should be coming to class in person. Why? Well, it's really easy to get disconnected. If you never actually come and see me in person, if you never actually come and see your fellow students, if you never actually come and sit in a classroom chair, it's really easy for this class to seem unreal. But it is very real. And the grade you get is very real. And its impact on your GPA is very real. And your GPA's impact on your ability to get and keep financial aid is very real. So if you just kind of just don't come or just stream in or those other things, it's not really a good idea. Like I said, you may be in a situation where you're just extraordinarily anxious about COVID. And you're just like, I don't want to be around people right now. That's fine. That's okay. You know, you don't need to come to class. That's why we have these other ways of fulfilling your participation requirement. But if you are healthy, have not been exposed to COVID-19 or not in quarantine, you really should be coming to class, right? Unless you have a really, really good reason not to. If your reason is just like, eh, I don't feel like getting up early today. I don't feel like getting dressed. Those are the kinds of habits that make it difficult for you to succeed. In particular, it's a problem if you're streaming in um, and not paying attention. If you're just like, yeah, I know, I can just I can just stream in and, and I'll get counted as being present. And uh, that's great. And while I'm streaming in, I don't actually have to pay attention. I can just do other work or watch a YouTube video or something. That's really a bad idea. I do my best to make it so that it's worth students' time to come. We have discussion, we have review, we do things that will help students to learn the information, uh, which I think is good in and of itself, but of course is necessary if you want to do well on the exams. So it's very important if you are streaming in to pay close attention and do not multitask, do not try and do other things, focus on the test, right? I try and give you like the, I, I try and, you know, put up on PowerPoint and I also have in the video folders or the, the weekly folder, you know, I've got the links to the videos, I've got the, um, matching and the blackboard or I'm sorry the matching and the um, word bank assignments that will help you review don't you know or make, make sure you do those don't just say yeah I'll do it later or yeah I'm, you know you may not even hear me say it because you're not paying attention but if you're streaming in do play close attention do not multitask if you are doing the participation assignments do them in a timely manner don't wait several days to do them do them right away and make sure you do them and I think a lot of students sincerely think that they'll do them and say, yeah, I'll do it. And then they don't. So it's important that you fulfill your participation requirement. Uh, like I say, preferably you should be coming to class. That's the best experience. There are good reasons not to come to class. That's fine. But then you need to stream in and pay close attention. And if you do the participation requirement, do it right away. So here's the thing. This starts now. Improvement doesn't start tomorrow. It starts now, and it continues, even over breaks. One thing I want to stress, when you have a break, when you have like a day off, that's a time to rest. That's a time to catch up on work, get ahead on work. That's a time to sleep, All right? A lot of times, um, the weekend, that's when I try and get, if I can, take like an hour nap, catch up on some sleep, because I'm exhausted from the week. So 
these things are hard, right? That's not an easy thing to do. There's no secret to any of this. It's all basically based on devoting hard work and time. But if you do that, you will see good results. You'll be able to succeed. You'll be able to achieve your dreams. And I think that's a good thing, right? And that's what I want to help you to do. And that's why I'm spending time making this video when I could be doing other work, right? It's because ultimately I want you to succeed. And I hope you want to succeed as much as I do at least. So good luck and keep up the good work.